Sanctuary cities are a scourge to our country's law and order, to a civil society whose sacred duty is to provide for a common defense, promote domestic tranquility, and enforce the laws of the land. As John Adams once said, this is a government of laws, not of men. And when we depart from that central tenet of this republic, we are diminished as a people and we are weaker as a nation. So the long and short of this is Republicans are fear-mongering about sanctuary cities and immigrants in order to save a buck. They are introducing a bill that would strip federal funding, billions of dollars from cities, from whole states in some cases. It would strip from their own constituents, their own Republican conservative constituents, just to save money because they don't care about their constituents, and they're using fear-mongering of immigrants to do that. But before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, I want to focus on something that he just said that you, you may have missed that first time that you watched it. And he said, this is a government of laws, not of men. And he's right, tragically enough. He's correct about that. The USA is a government of laws and not people which is where so many of our problems stem from. Small anecdotal time. I was once uh, being recruited by the State Department to work there. I ended up turning it down because the idea of working for the American government made my skin crawl. Um, but I have a, a pretty decent background in psychology, sociology, degrees, and those kinds of things. And the person I was speaking to about possibly working for the State Department said that that was something that was severely lacking from the American government, and it would be a good asset. Someone who understands people. The government currently works for the laws and not the people. He was very astute when he said that. And I don't think he understood how negative that would come across. And when the rich, powerful people who are in charge get to make the laws, and you get to focus on maintaining law over the well-being of people, you get things like this, where you have no empathy for anybody else, and you take funding away from everybody. Instead of recognizing the beauty of our diverse communities and working to serve them, Republicans are putting forth a bill that would actually strip billions in federal funding from their own communities, and even from entire states, including my home state of New York. This bill is so broadly written that it could endanger federal funding for school lunches, public schools, hospitals, public transportation, roads and bridges, police equipment, emergency response, and much more. These are the institutions that keep us safe, healthy, and able to thrive. But Republicans are throwing it all away. For what? For hate, for fear mongering, and for their own power. Not only is this bill that they're putting forward already nasty and taking away funding from people who need it, including, once again, their own constituents, but it is so vaguely written that it could be interpreted later in order to take funding away from other systems. This bill is so broadly written that it could endanger federal funding for school lunches, public schools, hospitals, public transportation, roads and bridges, police equipment, emergency response, and much more. These are the institutions that keep us safe, healthy, and able to thrive. But Republicans are throwing it all away. For what? For hate, for fear mongering, and for their own power. Oh, Miranda, the, they would never do that. They the, the couldn't do that. The people use common sense. Do they? Let's, let's take an example. Let's look at the states with the strictest abortion laws. Who do those laws most affect? People who aren't just looking to go get an abortion, turns out. Amber Thurman died in Georgia of septic shock from a complication that could have easily been fixed with a DNC, but that fell under the abortion laws. So unfortunately, she couldn't receive it. She needed that procedure, but in Georgia, because of the abortion laws, you can only perform a DNC if the patient is on threat of life. So they had to wait until she was dying to perform that procedure, and then she died. Common sense.
sure. Laws are written like this intentionally. They're written like this for a reason. And believe you me, the moment Republicans are back in charge, if Trump gets reelected, I can guarantee you they're going to take away funding from all those programs that were just mentioned. Kids can't eat lunch. Screw them kids. That's their parents' fault. Guess they don't get to eat. There are fewer things more despairing than having to pass laws to enforce laws because our chief law enforcement uh, officer and commander in chief has fallen down on the job. If President Biden and Vice President Harris don't respect the laws of our land, I don't suspect uh, other people will either. I rise in support of H.R. 5717, the No Bailout for Sanctuary Cities Act. At the appropriate time, I will offer a motion to recommit this bill back to committee. If the House rules permitted, I would have offered the motion with an important amendment to this bill. My amendment would restore desperately needed Title I funding for our public schools. I'm a lifelong educator. I was a teacher, counselor, and middle school principal before coming to Congress. And I've watched as Republicans try to come for public schools. In the FY25 budget, they proposed to cut Title I funding by 25%. In fact, Project 2025 wants to cut Title I funding for schools completely. Think about what that would mean for our kids. Project 2025, which it will be enacted if Trump is elected, believe you me, no matter how he tries to distance himself from it, his name was specifically mentioned in that document over 300 times. They want to get rid of Title I funding completely, which will decimate public schools in low-income areas. And not only that, but they're trying to get rid of any sort of LGBTQ support. Diversity programs are going to change how college funds are dispersed among students. They're trying to sneak parts of Project 2025 into Congress now so that if Trump is not reelected, they have something to fall back on to further de abolishing the Department of Education, getting rid of funding for schooling, getting rid of any diversity programs, etc. All the things that our children rely on. And it opens the door to get rid of funding for everything else. It starts with, oh, well, we can't bail out these sanctuary cities for these people who, who aren't even our citizens. It starts with the fear-mongering labeled that way. And it turns into getting rid of funding for every, all of the other things that we listed because of the vague way that it is worded. When in doubt about the motive behind a move in Congress, behind a bill being pushed through, when in doubt, where is the money coming from? Where would the money be going? Who's funding it? Who is seeking profit from it? Every single time. I guarantee you that will lead you to the root of why the bill is being introduced every single time. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to check out some of my content that isn't news related, you can check out my personal YouTube channel at Bad Gamer Wyatt. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.